What's up guys? I'm gonna unbox review this incredibly fast Netgear Switch. This is a 12 port, 10 gigabit Smart Manage Plus Switch. So it allows you to do extra things other than expand your ethernet ports within your network. You can use this in a home in a, or in a business setting. So this thing has a lot of features being a managed switch. So it supports VLANs. In fact, we'll set one up. So VLANs are virtual local area networks. That's what VLAN stands for. And it allows you to separate out the ports so certain devices on certain ports uh, Ethernet ports, I should say, can't see other devices. So we'll set that up. It has QoS, port mirroring, LACP, which is the link aggregation, and loop prevention is supposed to be whisper quiet. And it has the ProSafe limited lifetime warranty, next business day replacement, and 24 seven chat with the Netgear experts. All right, so we get the installation instructions, basically set up, how to connect it and everything, very similar to what was in the back. Tells you what the LEDs mean, which ports you're connected with, uh, the speeds of the connection, I should say, not what ports you're... Well, it'll also light up which ports are connected as well. So you have 12 Ethernet ports, and you'll notice there's a combo port group box right here. And basically what that means is that you have two SFP Plus ports, so if you decide to use the 11 port 11 of the SFP Plus, you can't use the port 11 of the Ethernet. Or if you decide to use the port 11 of the Ethernet, you can't use the port 11 of the SFP Plus port. And the same is true for port 12. And then these lights actually mean the speed of the connection, depending on the lights that shows up. The same is true for the SFP Plus ports. Neck here on the top, we got some uh, openings on the side right here. Uh, vents, I should say. We got two fans on this side, and we got the power right here. We got the little Kensington lock, and just basically info that I'm hiding right here. We have the power cable, and there's no brick because the AC to DC is built into the neck here switch. It comes with the rack mount accessories in case you want to mount it there. It also comes with the rubber feet in case you don't want to rack mount it. So I set up the switch. I have two of my laptops and I'm going to do a VLAN setup and a VLAN demo step by step to show you guys how it works. And uh, this switch is hooked up with the black ethernet cable. It's going to my other switch. With the white ethernet cable, it's coming to this computer and the purple ethernet cable is going to this computer. So I will do the VLAN setup right after I go over the UI. So, but we'll start off at the beginning with how do I find this switch on my network? So there's a few ways of finding it. Basically you could look inside your router app to look at attached devices or your mesh Wi-Fi app. Uh, or you could get a Netgear switch discovery tool. Uh, you don't need to get this tool, but if you need to find the IP address, this is an easy way of doing it as well. And so once you get the tool uh, on a computer that's hooked up to this thing, as you guys could see this one is, I click on start searching. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna find all the managed switches on my network. Now, because I have two managed switches, it's going to find both. And uh, it takes like less than a minute or so. And it found both, and then this is the IP address. Now I could click on admin page, and this will ask me to register it, and then it'll take me to the page. But I've already registered it, and I'm already on the page. But basically, this is the IP address you need to type. Uh, my IP address is most likely going to be different from yours, uh, but this will be the IP address you use to get to it. It tells you the firmware version as well. Okay, so I'm going to close that. We're here on the main page, so this is what the interface looks like. So when you go to this, it's going to ask you for a password. The default password happens to be password, and then it asks you to change your password. So I've already done all of that, and I'm logged in to the switch. So let's just go over the interface. So we'll start off with switch information. Uh, you could change out the switch name if you want to. Uh, it tells you the firmware version. In fact, I updated the firmware by going to the Netgear website and finding the model number, downloading it, and I'll show you guys where I uploaded it there. Uh, but this is basically the info. Port statuses tells you the link speeds and uh, among other things. So here's the, I, I basically have two of my laptops are at different speeds, so basically, this black ethernet cable is hooked up to my other switch and I have a 10 gig LAN at home, a local area network. So that's why this black one is showing up as 10 gigs full. The port four, which is this guy, this computer right here is a gigabit port. Now it says a thousand, technically a thousand isn't a gigabit, but I think that's pretty much kind of how it's counted in, in the networking world. Not something Netgear specifically does, but I think it's just like that. But in the computer world, uh, 1024, um, megabits is actually a gigabit because in the computer world everything is in powers of two um, so just as a heads up now, hard drives are also like this it's kind of like the metric way um, 
of counting it. But anyways, um, this other computer is sucked up at 2.5 gigabits. So it's basically this thing can handle up to 10 gig speeds, assuming your other devices can handle those speeds. If this one can't, if I do a speed test or whatever, the fastest this thing can do is gigabit speeds, essentially. Unless I hook up a USB adapter that can go faster or something like that. Anyways, that basically gives you that loop prevention, power saving mode, disabled for me, uh, discovery and management. Uh, we got the maintenance, you wanna change your password. This is where I did the firmware update, browse and I clicked apply. Uh, you could save the config, you could restore it if you want. Lo a bunch of monitoring, bytes received and sent and everything like that. Uh, mirroring cable testing, uh, multicast, and link aggregation if you guys are interested in that. Um, I'll cover VLAN in a second. Let's go to QoS, which is quality of service, which is which basically can allow certain things to have higher priority than other things. Uh, I'm not going to do QoS, but this is it, it can do QoS. And then you got the help page. And now let's go to virtual LAN. Basically, we've got port based. We got 802.1Q, which is the one I'm going to do. And we got voice VLAN. So we'll start off. We'll, we'll just do the 802.1Q. So you could do a basic mode or you could do the advanced mode. So I'm going to click on the advanced one. I'm going to click on VLAN config and I'm going to click enable. When I do this, it's going to say, hey, are you sure you want to do this? It's going to erase everything. And I'm going to say, OK, because in my case, I have nothing else saved. And then when I do this, you'll notice that the apply turns blue. And if I don't click apply, it's actually not going to remember. So I want to click apply and then it's going to create it right here. And you can make a VLAN from one to 4,093, which and some of those are typically reserved, but um, it looks like only one is here right now. Um, so I'm just going to do 10 because 10 is usually the number that I do. It doesn't have to be 10. You could pick 25. You could pick 127, whatever, uh, up to 4,093. Um, so basically, I'm going to pick 10. I'm going to click Add, and it's going to make a new VLAN ID. And you'll notice here that there's no ports assigned to it. So I'm going to do VLAN membership, and I'm going to go to port 10, uh, VLAN ID 10 not port 10, VLAN ID 10, and this is here because I just created it. And the group, group operation is if you want to do untag all or tag all and stuff like that, so I'm going to ignore that. So in this demo, I want ports 7 and port 8 to be the ones that see each other, and I don't want VLAN ID 1 to see these two ports. So what I do is I pick untagged. You is untagged, and then you, if you click again, it's tagged. If you click again, it disappears. So I'm going to do untagged. So the difference between untagged and tagged, untagged is pretty much reserved. It's, it's supposed to be used for devices. So like a computer or a PlayStation or your cameras or something like that. That's just a device. Tagged is if you want certain information to go to another switch that has. So basically the example would be, I have another, this is in fact hooked up to another managed switch right now. So if I wanted to, I could make um, a VLAN ID on that switch and then, a, and then a VLAN ID on this switch and I can have those two VLAN IDs be the same one that they could see each other. And the way I would need to do that is I would need to tag the port that's going from this switch to the other switch, which happens to be, in my case, happens to be port one because that's the one I'm currently using. So this black one happens to be going to the other managed switch. Whereas port seven and eight, I just want to hook up my two laptops, so I want to have it in the untagged um, port. So once I do this, I click apply, and then I go to port PVID, and um, you might be thinking like, well, don't you need to go and disable on VLAN ID one? And you would be right. However, when I click apply, it says you can't remove this because the PVID must come first. So after I set up VLAN ID 10, I need to go to port PVID and I need to change seven and eight, which are the two ethernet ports that I selected. And I want to change those to 10 and I want to click apply because currently they're set to one. So I want to click apply. So they get set to 10. And now if I go to VLAN membership, now I could go to VLAN ID one and I can turn these guys off. So basically one through six and nine through 12 will be on the same uh, VLAN ID, but seven and eight will not be seven and eight will be outside of VLAN ID one. So I'm going to click apply again, super important to click apply because if I change something and I don't click apply and I go here 
and I come back, well, it didn't save it. So super important for every page, that's why it highlights blue, you wanna click apply uh, if you want that change. So now this thing is set up because I turned it off from VLAN ID one, and now VLAN ID 10 is set up and port one is tagged for, for this VLAN ID. I don't actually need to tag it for this other guy, I just need to tag it for the VLAN ID that I'm on. Um, so now this is basically complete. So now I'm going to do a demo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to control panel. My Wi-Fi is disabled, so I'm going to right click. I'm gonna go to properties and I'm gonna click here. All right, so currently my IP address is on automatic and I wanna make it a static IP address. So I'm gonna pick an IP address in the same subnet as this other computer and I'm gonna choose uh, uh, the default subnet and I'm gonna choose 15 for this guy. So this can be any any number from zero to 255, but some of them are reserved. Um, so I, I'm just gonna pick um, 15. So I'm gonna assign this IP address, so I'm gonna click okay. And on this other computer, by the way, this thing is pinging just, in fact, let me, let me stop the ping right now. Let me clear the screen. And this is where I'm going to ping because on this other computer right here, I want to show you guys that this guy is hooked up. This is the IP address that I've assigned to this one. Again, these three numbers are super important for them to be the same and the subnet should be the same with no default gateway for both. Um, so I'm going to press OK. And I also have to disable my smart firewall. So if you have a firewall, I'm not telling you to disable it, but if it's not connecting, it's most likely the firewall. So I've disabled it temporarily for this demo. Okay. So now that I've done this, on this computer, on, on this one right here, I need to ping 192.168.10.15, and I do dash T, which basically says keep going. And then on this computer, I need to ping .25. So I'm gonna press enter, and it shouldn't connect. And the reason why it shouldn't is because I'm not on, port seven and eight are different, it's separate from the rest of them. So the only way this is gonna work, and the same is true for this guy. This guy can't talk to this guy either. So the only way this is gonna work is if I take out this ethernet cable that's hooked up to this, because this guy's already on port eight. I'm gonna connect it to this. And once I do that, give it a second or so, they should start seeing each other because these two are connected. Now, on the other switch, I can also set it up uh, for it to be on the same VLAN. And in fact, I've already done this with a separate video where I do two switches. And uh, I'll link that down below if you guys are interested in that demo. It's, it's towards the end of the video that I do that setup. But basically, we have now set up a VLAN. We've isolated these two ports and now none of the other ports can see each other. So if I connect this and go to another port, it's not gonna see it. Um, so there's that. But by default, if you haven't changed any settings on the managed switch, it works just like an unmanaged switch, so all the ports can see each other. So they can all talk to each other within the same network. But because we've separated out these two, it cannot. So with that, if you guys enjoyed this video, smash that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.